Greetings. It is a cold, wintry winter day here in Tucson, Arizona. You can see the sky behind me just looks gloomy. If you're out in the desert right now boondocking, I hope you have a generator because you're gonna get nothing for solar. And it's been like this for a couple days. It's so bad that I can't do any of my solar panel testing videos. I can't really do a lot of my product review stuff because I don't have any sun. And between that's been raining, I'm gonna do something a little different. I have an extended Hobo Tech Tip that I'm gonna provide for you guys right now. This is something I recorded way back in July. It was right after the summer solstice and it wasn't very appropriate to release back then. It's about how to angle your solar panels for the most efficient use of the sun. So I tell you what kind of apps to use. You can use a compass, either the compass on your phone or you can buy a separate compass. And it kind of goes through how you can angle your panels to get the maximum amount of sun, the maximum amount of power during the day. And on days like this, if all you have is solar, you're not gonna get a lot. And angling the panels at the sun and moving them during the day is still gonna provide you more than what you would get if you didn't angle them at all. This video is gonna teach you guys how to take your suitcase kits, your ground deploy panels, or any kind of movable panels you have on the roof of your RV, like you can swivel or tilt them, and show you how to get the most bang for your buck for all that solar that you invested in. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's do a little time traveling back to July. Greetings, peeps. Today we're gonna to show you how to get the most bang for your buck out of your solar panels by using proper aiming technique. Now, if you wanna be super nerdy accurate about this, what you'll wanna get is one of these cheap sighting compasses. I think they're around 13 to $15. I do have them available on my Amazon page, but if you don't have a sighting compass, you can use the compass on your cell phone, which isn't very good. You can also use, just like any kind of magnetic compass, give you a rough idea where you need to aim your panels. Now you're probably saying, hey Tom, I just point it towards the sun and that's that works. Yes, that sort of works, but you don't really know exactly where the sun's gonna come up or the sun's gonna go down the first day you're at a new campsite. If you move around a lot, you're gonna be in a different spot every day. You can kind of say, yeah, that's east, yeah, that's west. But in the summertime, the sun comes up actually closer to northeast and sets closer to southwest, at least here in Arizona. Now that's gonna depend on your latitude and things like that. But I'll show you what I mean when we figure out where our coordinates are and what angle the sun comes up and sun goes down. Now to use the photographers of Firamis to figure out where the angle is of the sunrise and sunset and where solar noon is and how high to tilt your panels, let's go ahead and do that. So this is the app. It's called the Photographer's Ephemeris and it's available for Android for $2.99. Now you can access this information for free online at their website and we're gonna show you that next. The big benefit to using the app over the web version is that if you hit the icon in the upper right corner, this little arrow, it will take you to your exact GPS location where you can see the sunrise and sunset. Now by default, it's gonna show you the sunrise and sunset times for your day. So you just hit this little button in the middle and it takes you to right now. Now the important information on this screen is the sun where it says 517 a.m. at 61 degrees and 742 p.m. at 299 degrees. So what this is telling you is that the sun rises at 517 a.m. at 61 degrees, which is 61 degrees from north and sets at 742 p.m. at 299 degrees. So these are compass degrees, and these are the degrees that you actually use with your sighting compass. So when you point your solar panels in the morning, you point them towards 61 degrees. When you want to point them towards the sunset in the evening, you point them at 299 degrees. Now you can actually scroll this right and get more information like civil nautical and astronomical twilight. This is for photography and stargazing. Uh, this is gonna tell you the current time and what the angle of the sun and moon is right now. now Here's how you're gonna figure out what angle you should set your solar panel to. What you can do is you can use this little scroll wheel down here and you'll see that orange line 
moves across the screen. That orange line is the sun moving throughout the day. So when the sun rises, it rises over there towards the northeast, goes to the south, sets towards the northwest. I find out that the easiest way to do this on the app is just to take this line, put it right in the middle between the two angles. Now that tells you the angle of the sun at its highest peak of the day. And in this case, it's 78.6 degrees. So you can round that up to 80 or down to 75. So what you want to do is you want to take this 78 degrees, subtract 90 from it, and that gives you the angle that you should set your solar panels from the ground. So in this case, it'd be about 12 degrees. Uh, essentially, you can just lay your panels flat at this time of the year, right around the summer solstice, and get the most sun. You really don't have to angle them. Now I angle mine at 30 degrees, roughly, just so that I can capture sunrise and sunset better. And I let my flat roof panels do all the work during the middle of the day. So you can scroll through here. You've got some, some other information that you can use. Now this is mainly for photographers, but um, I find it useful for all kinds of things. So I can know where the sun's gonna come up and go down, uh, which way I can point my vehicle. Like if I wanna point my van a certain way so that the sun's gonna be beating on a certain side, or if I wanna aim my panels, or I use it for photography. Of course it supports different maps. You can change it to topography. This is pretty cool here. This will show you the light pollution. So from where I'm at right now, I'm actually, even though I'm pretty far out in the middle of nowhere, I'm still getting some of the light pollution from Phoenix. That's pretty amazing. Now let's move on to the desktop version or the web version. Okay, here is the web version of the photographer's ephemeris. You can find this by Googling Photographer Ephemeris, or you can go to photoephemeris.com. So the difference between the web version and the app version, um, this one does not automatically detect your location. You have to type it into this box, and it doesn't really support pasting coordinates. So what you have to do is find the nearest town, and then kind of scroll around until you find where you are, and you can zoom in. This is just a pretend campsite. This is not where I'm actually staying, but it gives you an idea of what it looks like compared to the phone version. Now you can go to the time right now by clicking up there, and it takes you to the time right now, which is 9 o'clock. Of course, the sun is down. But the important numbers here are down here where it says sunrise. Sunrise at 5.17 a.m. at 61 degrees, and sunset at 19.42, which is 7.42 p.m. at 2.99 degrees. This is where you want to point your panels. So 61 degrees from north in the morning and 299 degrees from north in the evening. Now one of the things you'll probably want to do in the online version is go to your settings and change this to English Imperial, otherwise everything's going to be in metric. And you can set also to show widescreen. So you can fast forward back and forth through time by using these arrows, or you can use the slider bar if you want to skip multiple days. So you want to figure out uh, where the sun's going to be on a certain date. You can just pull up the calendar and say, okay, I want to know on June 28th, uh, sunrise. And you can see that it has changed slightly. It's almost 61 degrees, and then the degrees have changed slightly for sunset. Now, that's a very gradual over each day. So you're not going to see drastic changes just over a few weeks. But if you're driving across the country or you're changing latitude, um, these numbers can change greatly. So just like the app version, you can slide this timeline and get the sun exactly where it is at its peak. So you can see on here, it stops about 78 and a half degrees. That's where the sun is at its highest in the sky, and that's going to happen at 1232 in the afternoon. So if you want to point your, if you want to angle your panels, you'd want to angle them at 90 degrees minus 78 and a half. So they give you about 12 degrees. Essentially, you can have your panels flat on the ground. But let's just do a little quick experiment and let's change to December 21st. And you can see how drastically the sunrise and sunset has changed. So sunrise is now much later and sunset is much earlier. Look at the difference in degrees. Now the sunrise will come up at 118 from north and set at 247 from north. This will give you an idea of 
where the sun's going to come up and where the sun's going to set. And it's only going to be in this arc during the day. So say this pin is your RV and the point is facing, is the front of your cab. So the sun is going to hit your RV and cast a shadow this way in the morning. And then it's going to hit and cast a shadow this way in the evening. So pretty much everything back here behind your, behind your RV is going to see some shade during the day. And this is important if you want to put your ground panels down, you would actually want to put them down in front of your RV because the angle of the sun is going to be so low in the sky. You can look right here. At high noon, the sun's only 32 degrees in the sky. That's really low. In that case, you'd want to set your panels at 60 degrees. Let's see what the around the RTR time in 2020. That's going to be somewhere around this week, I think. And in fact, we can go to Quartzite. There we go. We're in Quartzite. Now, that's not going to help because we're not going to be in the middle of town. Okay, so let's pretend we're staying here at the La Posa West LTVA. So we can just click our up here, and that will put the marker down. Right here, peak solar is going to be at 1248 in the afternoon, but the sun's only going to be 34 degrees high in the sky. So you would need to tilt your solar panels at 60 degrees to get the most sun. So there's sunrise. It only goes up to 20 degrees, 25 degrees by 10 a.m. And by the time the sun is setting around 430, which, yes, it's actually that early in the desert, it's very low in the sky. The angles are really low, so you need to make sure that you have your solar panels angled properly. So that's it for the web version of the photographer's ephemeris. So I'm sure some of you are saying, hey, Tom, there's the setting sun. That's got to be west, right? So if I want to point my solar panels towards the east for the morning when I wake up, I should probably point them towards this tree. That's directly across. You would think that's east and that's west because everybody knows the sun comes up in the east and sets in the west. It only does that twice a year. Uh, all the other times of the year, it's setting pretty far angle off from east. It's either going to be closer to the south in the winter or closer to the north in the summer. I'm going to show you how wrong you could be by aiming your panels towards that tree for the morning sun. So the app says the sun rises at 60 degrees roughly and sets at 299 degrees roughly. So we're just going to go by 60 degrees and 300 degrees and use our compass to show you how to do that. Now this is a sighting compass which means you can actually look through this cross at a distant object like a tree or a bush and use that as a landmark to know where the sun's going to come up. So the app says the sun comes up at 60 degrees. But there we go. You can see through the hole that's 60 degrees. So we pick that bush over there as the landmark. Now if you would have said point the panels here because that's supposed to be east, that's way off. That's 110 degrees. That's actually a little further south than east. If you're just going by the shadow that's casting on the ground thinking, hey, that's got to be east. So we know 60 degrees is that bush. Now, I like to put a physical reminder on the ground so that way when I'm coming out and I'm turning my panels every day, then I know exactly where to put them. I don't have to guess. What I do, I put a board on the ground, step back, and make sure it's lining up with that bush. That's 60 degrees approximately pointing towards that bush. I know is that's where I'm supposed to rotate my panels to catch the first morning sun. So we repeat the same process for sunset. Now I can see where the sun's going down today, but say I showed up at a campsite in the morning, I have no idea where the sun's gonna set. So let's go ahead and find a 300 degree mark, which will show us exactly where the sun's gonna set. So there we go, 300 degrees. If we aim our last stick towards that bush, that's where the sun's gonna set. Now look where the sun is right now. It's kind of over there. You would, you would think it's gonna drop straight down, but actually it's gonna curve over to where this bush is. So that's where you wanna aim your solar panels in the evening. So 300 degrees points right where that little bush is. So that's where the sun's gonna go down. Okay, so now that we have our sticks, one facing for sunrise and one facing for sunset, so how do you find true north or south once you have these sticks set up? Well, we know that's sunrise and that's sunset for this time of year. 
All you do is you split the difference. So go right in between, and where my pinky is pointing is true north. Now if you want to true south, you just walk around and do the opposite. So if I wanted to point my solar panels just one place, I'd point them towards my van and just leave them there all day. So that's going to bring up the next question. How often should you move your solar panels to get the most power? Well, if you were crazy, you'd come out every hour and move them a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, and follow the sun all day long. However, that's a lot of work and wasted time. You're not gonna get much of a benefit from that. I find it's best to move them three times a day. I set them once to catch the morning sun, and then around nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, I face them south to catch it from about 10 o'clock to maybe two or three in the afternoon. And then I face them towards the sunset so that the last few hours of the day, I'm gonna catch most of the sun that comes down with the sunset. So your next question might be, what about the angle of your solar panels? Well, in the wintertime, you have to aim them higher. And in the summertime, you aim them lower. Now, actually around this time of year, you can lay them flat on the ground. And I know a lot of people that do that in the middle of summer, they just lay them flat on the ground, especially here in Arizona. As you go further north, the angle is gonna be a little different. The best way to calculate that is through the app or through the website. And once you have that angle, for example, this time of year, solar noon, about 70 degrees in the sky. So 70 degrees high off the ground. That means you have to aim your solar panels at an angle of about 30 degrees. That's approximately where I have them. Now, it doesn't need to be exact because solar panels are designed to take sun at a little bit of an off angle. And in the winter time, I would angle them up much higher because it's opposite in the winter than it is in the summer. So the reason why you want to use the app is because it'll work for your location at your time of the year. And it'll tell you, especially if you're a full timer and you boondock a lot and you're not plugged in and you don't want to run your generator constantly if, if you even have a generator, you can use this technique to get the most power out of your panels possible. Now I've seen some people do some crazy things with solar panels directly upright like this in the middle of summer up against their vehicle. I saw a whole row of people doing that. I saw people doing this at the RTR in the middle of winter. Um, they had their solar panels just laying flat on the ground in the middle of winter. And you're not gonna get anything if you lay your solar panels flat in the middle of winter. Uh, I'll tell you that by proof, those solar panels I have on the back of the van do absolutely nothing in the winter. I get like one amp. That's why I have these ground deploys. The ground deploys allow me to eke out the sun in the morning and the evening where my flat panels on the roof give me power towards the middle of the day. And that's mostly effective spring through fall. In the winter time, they don't really do anything. That's why I put the tilt kit on my third panel up front there. So what I do is I just park with my van facing south, which I am right now, the van is facing south. And if it was fall or spring or winter, I would have my front panel popped up, but the sun's pretty much coming up straight overhead. So I'm just leaving it flat and getting the most power that way. Well, hopefully you enjoy this video and you learned something and now you'll be able to get the most bang for your buck out of your solar panels. Of course, once you've been here a couple of days, you have it figured out. You don't need the sticks on the ground anymore, but there's a lot of people that travel and they only stay in a place for a couple days. This really might help those people out with this technique. So that's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Today we're going to show you how to get the most bang for your buck out of your solar panels by using proper... Get off me, you bitch. Son of a bitch. I'm trying to record fucking land lands right on my finger. And the wind's all blowing and the cars are zooming. It's just never going to stop. So, greetings, peeps. Today we're going to show you how to get the most... Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. Barbie Gold Gun Hat. <laughs>